Hey, it's Ice Age TV. And what am I doing today besides having to buy another one of these? See this right here? Oh my gosh. This is just maddening. So, what am I doing, right? What am I doing? Well, I'm buying a new motorcycle trailer today. And I walk out of the shop with my hitch that doesn't plug into my Ford truck right here. It's a small receiver, which I've been blown away. But hey, follow me along for my adventures today in the motorcycle trailer purchase day. Hey, it's Ice Age TV. I was just showing you that back hitch setup. So what am I doing today, right? Oh my gosh, it's so dangerous. So get this. You know, I bought a trailer here last fall and now I'm buying another trailer. You'd be like, yeah, but you're buying another trailer. What, what, what the hell are you doing? You just bought a motorcycle trailer. Well, I bought a motorcycle trailer car hauler, uh, basically, but now I'm actually just buying back a motorcycle trailer I just actually sold in some some ways last, you know, last year. And it's one of these things where I'm getting a hell of a deal. People are like, oh, come on, man. What's this, always getting this hell of a deal? Okay, well, you know, if you follow me around, you'd understand a little better, but here we go. So let me reverse the camera. All right, so what we have here is Capital Renegade, who it's very interesting because I usually buy all my trailers from Trailer Enterprises, but I'm up here at Capital Renegade picking up my new motorcycle trailer. And you're probably like, yeah, there's a lot of trailers up there. Yeah, those are the Grace car haulers. This is the motorcycle trailer, which I actually looked at last year. And this is a pre-pandemic pricing. So that trailer right there isn't even made anymore. United Trailers stopped making. Yeah, this looks really nice. So. I just really like the United product, but you can't get this trailer. United sold out. <laughs> they don't make a seven by 14 motorcycle trailer anymore. It's insane. What's going on in this country? So, oh my goodness. I'll talk more once the gentleman here is not hanging over me. See here? Got the motorcycle chalks, nice interior. Light, Let's see if the light works. Uh, no, well it's not plugged in, duh. <laughs> All right, we'll check that in a second. Oh, it's dangerous with me. It's very dangerous. Good Lord. I just bought another trailer. <laughs> All right. Jeez. Talk about the unexpected purchase. And some be like, what the heck is going on? So here's the deal. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I talk about the car gods, you know, the motorcycle gods. I don't know, man. I mean, just to me in my life. And I know some people are like, oh, you're not getting the deal you're thinking you're getting. Okay, well, I've got really good friends that I buy stuff from all the time. And this 7x14 United trailer that's behind my truck now that I just bought, which, you know, if you probably went through the list, I could probably say conservative, I've bought at least six, I'd say five, I'd say this is number five United trailer, motorcycle trailers. I'm not including me buying United Trailers. But I would say, just off the tip of my tongue, very conservative, I'll say four. Okay, but I think this is probably number five. And and so, here's what's going on. You may be like, well, yeah, but you already have a car hauler, then you have like a motorcycle thing you bought last fall, you showed the video on, the Bravo Scout trailer. Yeah, and that's like eight and a half by... Twenty trailer, if I remember right, the length, and you know that that can call my Mustang, or it's either or versus my eight and a half by twenty eight car hauler. That that's more about you can put the car and the bikes in it, but you got to have the big truck to pull it, and then it's just you know it's just a lot of work to take places, and yeah, well, why the hell do you have it, right? Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> as my trailer bounces all over a place behind me here. So, anyways, so this is this is the adventure, 
okay? I am going to go to Florida with my motorcycle trailer and my motorcycles in it, and I'm gonna pull it with my new Bronco. The new hot pepper red, red hot chili pepper uh, Bronco that actually I'm driving to uh, Coombs Sterling Ford right now to pick up the electronic brake controller. So, which that may be a whole video of me showing you how to put that in, or it may be a video. I'm like, eh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have a dealer do it because it's so much technology in these vehicles anymore that you just got to be really careful what you're splicing into because for years and years, you know, I have installed my own electric brake controllers in all, a lot of my vehicles, but it's just not the same. It's not the same, you know, meaning that there's just so much technology. If you want to keep the safety uh, features on the whole vehicle and trailer, you need to tie in with the whole wiring harness into the Bronco, which I'm going to go pick that up right now as I haul my 7x14 United trailer, motorcycle trailer. So got a call here oh my goodness distractions distractions so anyways you know i was here talking about yeah whatever right you know you're doing business and talking and doing anything else like what 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 so yeah so here's the deal so here's the trailer i just picked up and oh my gosh i mean i'm borderline you know i, I have no desire to like you know basically take advantage of situations but people be like okay well what's that supposed to mean right well here's the ball game i'm not embellishing here this this trailer i'm towing is a trailer that i just bought for about five grand less than if i was to buy a new one because of all this pandemic related um you know pricing of these trailers if you think I'm kidding, you, if you go, to give you an example. When I used to buy a motorcycle trailer 10 years ago, even eight years ago, it was like six to $7,000. And then the decked out ones were about nine grand. I'm talking about the special cabinets, the special, you know, nice rubber flooring, uh, you know, seven by 16, you know, width and all that other stuff. And so, Today, you're now talking ten, twelve, fourteen thousand dollars for these motorcycle trailers that used to be five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars. So, you know, what I just paid for this trailer is I'm not embellishing. This trailer is basically about five grand more. You know, you're probably okay. Well, what, what was the price of the trailer? Okay, this trailer I got it for seven thousand dollars. And this trailer is really right now close to 12 grand. I would say conservative. It's 11, 9, 12 grand. I'm talking about discounted. Okay, well, for the heck of it, I'll say it's 10 grand, but it's not available at $7,000. I'll show you all my pictures of my trailer. I'm talking about United. I'm not talking about some cheap ass trailer out there that's all wood, no, you know, no vinyl walls. You know, I mean, yeah, there's really cheap-ass trailers out there, single axle. I get all that. But what I'm telling you, the way this trailer is set up, if you're to build it, which here's the thing, you can't build it. United Trailers isn't making the trailer anymore. They're, they've moved on to the side-by-side -side utility vehicle market, so it's a bigger trailer. So it means it's more material, which means it's more money. So, yeah, so here I got this great idea this past week hey why don't i take my ford bronco to florida and being it's got a measly i mean measly 3500 pound towing capacity yeah yeah you just hear me the towing capacity for the ford full-size bronco is 3500 3500 pounds so now here's the challenge okay you got to find a trailer that's about 2,000 pounds or less if you're if you're hauling your full dressers because the average weight of a fully dressed bike is a good 800 plus pounds. So, you know, you factor 800 times 2, 1,600 pounds. You have a 2,000 pound trailer. There's 3,600 pounds with no gear. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, anyways, so for me, the challenge is 
you know, I can't use my Bronco to, to tow my bigger trailers. It won't work. Or, which I do a lot of times, I throw my vehicle in the trailer along with my motorcycles. Then I take my, what I used to have the big dually, or I take my... F-250, I mean, in all reality, this F-150 would carry it, but it's just a lot of trailer, and then I got multiple vehicles, and right now, I'm just not on that page. I'm more on the page. Hey, if I just want to take my Bronco and take some bikes with me and go, go places, I can, and that's what it's all about, but at the same time, but at the same time, what I'm wanting to do is I want to do a tow review on my Bronco with a 3,500 pound trailer behind it and see how she does. And, you know, a lot of variables there. You know, how does she pull? Uh, you know, how does she do on fuel mileage? Which that's a little concerning. I'm going all the way to Florida. Is that damn thing gonna get like eight miles a gallon, nine miles a gallon? It gets very expensive when you start getting down that low. I mean, right now I'm pulling with my F-150 truck and it's extremely windy day today. And that trailer behind me, it's, you know, you can feel that trailer behind this truck. So I'm already thinking, yeah, I know how it's going to play out with that uh, Bronco. Yeah, it's going to know that that trailer is behind it. And then you add some motorcycles in it. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be interesting times for the, uh, the Bronco trailer adventure. You know, what do I call that video? The Florida, you know, Florida hot pepper red trailer adventures to Florida. But at the same time, I'm excited to see if I can put in my uh, my electronic brake system on that vehicle on my own without having to pay the Ford dealer tech guys to do that, you know? So, uh, so anyways, follow me along here as I talk about my motorcycle trailer. And, uh, and you know, yikes. Yeah, right, yikes. That's my word. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and is the wife happy about this purchase? Nope. Yeah, did that, did that turn into a major, you know conversation yeah it always does you know people i know i actually had one person reach out to me and like how many cars do you have are you married <laughs> yeah. i'm like yeah 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 i'm married has it been easy no no it hasn't yeah Does my wife think i'm crazy yeah but you know those are all other stories not to but you know not to not to start going down the path of that it's all good if you know what I mean but anyways so let's talk more about motorcycles right and motorcycle trailers <laughs> yeah so here you know here's the thing last fall I go to Capital Renegade trailers which they've got a really nice operation if you want to buy a custom Intech aluminum trailer or a Freightliner uh race you know car hauler motorhome you know those guys are really big throughout the country and you know and so here's the thing last fall I went to their dealership and I originally looked at this motorcycle trailer and I was borderline gonna buy this trailer and so then I really got fixated on that Bravo Scout trailer which I just felt would be a little better arrangement for me at that moment right and so you know just for whatever reason this past week I'm the type of guy where like the light bulb goes off my head. See, what you don't know is down in Florida, my father and mother live in a retirement community and they have all these bylaws. And right now, if you guys watched my Santa Cruz video where I helped my dad buy handy Santa Cruz last December, that vehicle was explained to us to be a sport adventure vehicle. And that's how the registration would show up on the vehicle well, that's all false information. And that vehicle is registration says it's a truck. So if you ever look at the Hyundai Santa Fe, or I should say the Hyundai Santa Cruz, always get that Santa Fe word in there. Santa Cruz, you'll look at that vehicle and it's a chopped off Santa Fe's with a little trunk in the back of it, a little bed, but the registration for it says truck which is ridiculous. It's not a damn truck. It doesn't even have the weight capacities to be a truck. So for my father, we bought that vehicle with the intention of him being able to park that out in front of his driveway. Here, here's the ball game. Where my father lives, you can't park a truck in your driveway. Yeah, you think I'm embellishing here? Yeah, I mean, 
All right, I have no idea if my phone crapped out on me or what it did, but here's the ball game. You know, I right now usually haul down my car hauler with my extra vehicle and truck and motorcycles, and this time around, I'm just feeling like I'd rather just take my Bronco down and my motorcycle trailer down with my uh, two motorcycles and not do the big, the big, the big deal thing. And, you know, unbeknownst to a lot of people, my father and my mother, where they live, and I stay, the, they have association guidelines. You can't park trucks in the driveway, you know? I mean, you can't park a truck day in, day out of the driveway. It's the most stupid thing in the world. So, for them, for my father, you know, I helped my dad buy a Santa Cruz Hyundai vehicle last year. December, if you watch my video, and the sales guy told us that the vehicle was categorized on registration as a sport adventure vehicle. Not a truck. So my father and I thought, okay, well, that's cool because my dad has my Ford Ranger. That I bought him a few years ago that has to be parked in the garage. So now I'm like, okay, that's not a big deal. He can just leave the Santa Cruz vehicle out in the driveway because it's a sport adventure vehicle. It's not a truck. So that won't be a problem for the association to go after him. Well, yeah, that's totally wrong. Uh, the sales guy misled us and the reality is that vehicle is a truck. So that vehicle cannot sit in my father's driveway. I mean, is this just stupid stuff or what? I mean, it's just incredible how this is, how we operate, you know, a nice vehicle, doesn't look like a truck. It's a mini SUV with a chopped off back end of it to look like a pickup truck. But the registration of Florida says it's a truck. And so since it says a truck, uh, the neighbors can complain that this vehicle that doesn't look like a truck can't sit in the driveway. So for my father now, he's, he's now getting letters and notices from association. You can't leave that vehicle in your driveway. So now it's across the bridge. So I get rid of my dad's, you know, I, I gave my dad a Ranger truck. Do I take that away? He loves that vehicle. He doesn't want to lose that. So now he's cramming his Santa Fe vehicle into his garage. It barely fits. And it's just a fiasco. So now for me, if I go down to Florida for my two week vacation, and I come down there with my big ass truck. I start parking my big ass truck in his driveway. It's gonna be more complaints. My dad is gonna go nutty because the association's already, you know, going after him. And to the point that he now has to park one of the vehicles at my sister's house. It's just a fiasco. So for me, it's like, forget all that. I'm just gonna go down with my Bronco. And if I have a smaller trailer, I can haul my motorcycle down and and then I can have a good time down there because my Bronco can't get called out being in the driveway. Yeah, right. Watch how that plays out, right? With the horns on it and hot pepper red, red hot chili pepper look. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so the goal is I can go down to Florida if I want and I can I can tow with my Bronco, my motorcycles, and take them back and forth. And it won't be a problem for the association for me to uh, have my vehicle in the driveway and have to then coordinate having my truck parked in my brother's house, having my trailer parked in my brother-in-law's house, which, you know, the, the motorcycle trailer for sure will have to be parked in my brother-in-law's house while I'm not, you know, not using it. But at the same time, so here, that's kind of the root of the story. But at the same time, I'm excited to see how the Bronco does on pulling, you know, a trailer. And I really want to do a review on that. So it'd be a great review for the Bronco owners. But you know what? Also, you know, that that Ranger truck I have, it's incredible. It's same, it's the same GVW. Towing 3,500 pounds. My Ford Explorer ST. Same thing, same, you know, 3,500 pounds. So it's like all the Ford, you know, products in that segment 
are all 3,500 pound capabilities. So, and this, here's the dilemma. I mean, here's the thing. I'm gonna haul my Honda bikes down because they're lighter. I mean, I don't know. I mean, right now, what the hell am I gonna tow down? Too many options, right? Well, you got Indian motorcycles, right? Yeah, I got Honda motorcycles, right? Yeah, the Honda motorcycles would make more sense because they're lighter bikes. If I throw my Indians in this trailer, this is a 2,300 pound empty trailer. Uh, well, I already know my one Indian bike's 800 pounds. There's 3,100 pounds right there. I got 400 pounds left. So if I throw one of my Hondas in there, that'll work. But if I throw another Indian in there, then realistically, I'll be over by 500 pounds. This would be a 4,000 pound, you know, I just had to be towing. I'd be towing like 3,900 pounds. Yeah, so it's, you know, they don't recommend that. Yeah, yikes decisions and here i am on the beltway enjoying the friday afternoon rush where everybody and their brothers out and about and it's only three o'clock I, I talk about this in my videos all the time if you live in this washington dc metro area you have from about 10 o'clock to two o'clock to drive around the beltway and then it's over so in the morning it's gridlock and then once after like 2 30 it's gridlock same thing so uh Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible, right? Hey, what's this right here, right? It's a peanut butter and jelly croissant. You live on the road like I do? There you go. Seven days. What the hell? Never had one of these damn things. <laughs> Lunchtime. Peanut butter and jelly. Look at this. Holy crap. Good old Beltway. I mean, if there's anything in that car, they're dead. Holy crap. Look at that. Yep, the Beltway. Well, that's sad. That was a minivan. You can only hope and pray that whoever was in that car got out of that vehicle. I mean... What's weird is that car was like parked on the side of the road, so you'd have to believe that they they stopped that car and they jumped out of the car because it wasn't like they crashed into something and something caught on fire, if you know what I mean. So, wow. That looked like a Chrysler Pacifica vehicle, too. Oh, my goodness gracious. And so here's the end result of that. So that, that fire and that whole accident has got the rubbernecking going on so the posing traffic here is you know major all right i got the electric brake for my bronco so now let's check out this bad boy here right how's she doing yep showing a little age there right you know what's crazy is they definitely cut back on the thickness of the on the uh, trailer, I can see that from my older ones. Interesting, right? Better do a walk around. So the difference in this from my other trailers is it's not a torsion spring setup. This is this is just your regular old leaf spring setup. So that's definitely making a little less money, but at the same time, not like five grand less. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, I've had some of these trailers. I'll have to post more pictures of it. You'll see, like, how many trailers have you bought? United? Yikes. Wow, Skr. Yikes, Skr. That's all the Ice Age kind of saying. You know, I've bought so many United trailers over the years, and they've all had the torsion spring set up on the rear suspension. And this is the first time I've owned a... Uh, spring actually leaf spring style rear suspension on the uh, trailer and, you know and it's not that radically different i mean i thought it'd be probably a little bit more bouncy back there but overall it's not as uh, overall the spring leaf suspension on the united trailer is not that bad now i could change my mind once i get going down the road with a load and it's maybe that kind of charge changing things but for right now it's pretty uh respectable the trailer is doing really well but you know what's really be neat is once i get my bronco hooked up to this thing 
and see how that thing feels this because you know this f-150 truck you know you know that trailer's back there now if i was driving my f-250 diesel there's i i would be like i don't even know that trailer's back there because it's such a heavier duty truck you know more weight stiffer suspension diesel you know thousand plus foot pounds of torque so to be really i'm really curious on how the bronco you know handles this uh trailer and you know then what am i getting in fuel mileage right now i'm getting like 17 miles a gallon to go to florida it's about a thousand mile trip you know am i going to get 10 miles a gallon eight miles a gallon oh yeah i mean see for me that'd be like oh that sucks because we'll be stopping like every 150 miles and i don't like that oh well anyways so uh now the adventures of setting up the bronco with the electric brake controller that'll be my next video and then uh, we'll do a tow video with the bronco with this trailer so you know hopefully i can share some information with everybody that helps them make decisions and do things and at the same time just kind of curious of you know what vehicles do and don't do if you know what i mean now i'm in these back roads and he sees trees they don't cut back these trees and then you drag this trailer across these tree limbs and i have these massive scratches all over my brand new trailer yikes if you see here this is what i'm talking about we used to buy some trees a second ago they never trimmed these trees back you know it's the country roads and every trailer i have has good old tree limb scratches all the way down the side of it because they come in the back way problem here is it's friday afternoon all the roads are locked down if you don't know all the back roads then you know it takes forever to get home so uh hey i hope you're enjoying watching the uh, video and i'm gonna do a little walk around trailer one more time all right i got her home look here I tell you i've had some these united trailers how many times have i said that but i just like their product and you know so what's going on in the market is everybody's buying these side by sides and the problem is it's the height see it's when you walk in here like for me you know a six foot tall person is going to hit their head right here so what the utility you know market the side by sides and all they need a taller you know a taller roof here so they're making them taller but the downside to that is it's so much wind resistance you know i mean i get it you want a taller you know trailer but when it comes to a motorcycle trailer you really don't want a tall trailer because your motorcycles aren't that tall. And even the point that, you know, in the good old days, motorcycle trailer would be about this high, just so you would cut down the wind resistance going down the road. So, and you know, but here's the thing, they don't make these anymore. And uh, which that's kind of disappointing. Now, usually what I get is these rubber black, you know, I usually have the rubber type of uh, flooring and then I change out these chalks for your motorcycles and I make them into the condor ones. I'll probably do that anyways. And, uh, but I like the, you know, I like the finish, the finish side, you know, sides and roof. And that's what I was saying earlier is you can, uh, you know, you can find a real bare minimum trailer, you know, in today's market for six, $7,000. But, it, I mean, it's stripped. <laughs> and even at that, I don't even know. In all reality, I'm not so sure you could even find that new right now with the material costs. So, I like the paint theme. And uh, I'm going to get a spare tire for it. And like I was telling you, you know, this has, a, this has the axe. This has the spring type of uh, axle. And these are like 3,500. This is 7. I think this is a 7K trailer. You know, meaning that... You should be able to load into this about 5,000 pounds. And I don't know about that. I'm going to go over here and check that out. Yeah, so this is a 7,000-pound gross trailer. And it's weighing in at, where is the actual, it's like 2,300 pounds is what I was told. So, and it was built in March of last year. So they had this, it's April 1st today. So they had this for a year. And that's probably why they gave me a little, you know, money off being a repeat customer. And, you know, this is now a year. So that's kind of hard to believe. But here's the thing. 
uh, Capital Custom Trailers, they specialize really in car haulers, race trailers, the Freightliner product. They're not really known for just like the utility vehicle or I should say the utility trailers. You know, so this is, they're kind of, the reason I got a good deal on this, they just don't market this product that much. That's really what it's all about. If they marketed this a different way, I'm sure they got a lot more money for it. But hey, it's a win for me, which I like. So, next time you see the picture of this trailer, you'll probably see behind my Bronco. Let's see how that does. It's a lot of trailer, though. You know, until you tow a trailer, you just don't, <laughs> you don't get it. You can already kind of see the runoff. You know, you can already see the blemish here. See here? I'm kind of like sitting a lot. But yeah, like, look at my trailers, you know. Look at those. <laughs> You got those show the age. You know, it's incredible. This trailer here I bought in 2017. That trailer's every bit worth 20 grand. And that's more than I paid for it. But, you know, the problem is that's going to cost me 30 to replace it. So, don't think I'm going to do that.